A hearty welcome to everybody um, that's joining us on our maiden voyage of Fierstein Live. Um, my name is Richard Gladstein, and I'm the executive director of the Fierstein School. And I'm primarily a film producer. So, and I recently joined this school in um, July. So, why is a film producer here at the Fierstein Graduate School? Because being a film producer is not that different than being the executive director at this school. So the skills that I've learned as a film producer um, are more than applicable. So part of being a film producer is identifying a story and developing that story and bringing like-minded people and unlike-minded people um, to the party and to convey that story in a distinct way. And then ask people to join you on the ride. So that's basically what we're going to do um, today. So I'd like to just get started. So we're going to give you a quick tour first, or maybe not so quick, of our wonderful facility. So I'd like to welcome um, our friend Jay Kim. Just in a second. And he's going to be walking through the school and giving us a tour. Um, Jay is the Technology and Resource Manager at the Fearson School and has been here from the beginning. Hi, Jay. Hi, Richard. How are you? I'm super great. Let's do a little tour, my friend. Sure. I'm going to start from fifth floor. This is our beautiful donor wall. And I'm going to walk toward actually post-production facility. Great. So this is as you would enter the school um, every day should you come here. And when you come here once there's no COVID, um, you can get a tour in person. So as we're going down the hallway, to your right, you're going to see one of the very many editing rooms that we have. Um, but I think we just passed one yep. of them. But they're right around here. Um, lecture halls. These are the lecture halls where you might have classes. Um, we passed one of the editing suites where we have Avid um, because post-production is one of the many um, majors, so to speak, that we have. Where are this, we now, Jay? This is our digital animation and visual effects classrooms as a state of art, the box workstation with the Wacom uh, touch panels. And uh, we have everything actually working at the moment. Students log in to this remote PC to use uh, popular software like uh, Nuke, ZBrush, Software Image, Maya, and uh, what, uh, Cinema 4D, 3DS Max. That's the day bloom. This we is also our have, um, uh, we also have, let's wander into the music room, shall we? Sure, this is a post-production lab, similar setup with the Apple. And this is our music lab with the keyboard setup. We have uh, Arbit Pro Tools, Apple Logic, Ableton Live, all those uh, popular music software. We have so two, of our, two of our programs um, are Sonic Arts and Media Scoring. So the lab that you were just in, our students spend an enormous amount of time receiving instruction in those rooms. Yeah, someone actually asked about can we see the editing rooms? Sure, I just open one of the editing rooms and Great. pop up. So this is a, the one person editing room with the Mac Pro, you can see it. Yep. It's a COVID you know, station. So that's so one of the-, of the curriculum, Part of the curriculum is that our students make an enormous number of films. Mm -hmm. And uh, aside from their classwork and their instruction, they will be using these rooms to work on their own movies on their own time outside of class. And the producers, directors, cinematographers, editors, etc., will utilize those rooms to cut their films. And in a little bit, we're going to talk to Rick Lopez, who runs the production um, discipline, basically, and supervises the making of the movies. What we're coming to now is our sound and music recording facilities. Yes. So we mentioned that we have media scoring, we mentioned that we have sonic arts, and in here um, are our recording suites. We have a student working, recording at the moment. We have a beautiful Avid S5 Fusion console with all the I.O. devices. And this is our recording studio with Steinway. 
and all those, you know, instruments and the microphones, collections. And the next room we have ADR, so that's uh, dialogue replacement room. Hello. So this is a smaller booth for voice recording. You can see it. And that's the Arbit SX console. Okay, next one is, sorry, is uh, our Foley room. And no one's working at the moment here, but you can see our beautiful Foley stage. Foley is where you put in footsteps and sound and yeah. sound effects. Yes. ADR stands for additional dialogue recording. Um, mm -hmm. So that's what these rooms um, will do for us. And so, as you can see, we have students working in some of the rooms because right now, and you know, one of the people asked a question going in, which is what, are, what changes did we make for COVID? Um, as Jay walks, I'm gonna just explain a couple of things. So uh, Jay's gonna wander towards the finishing rooms. Yep. And I'm gonna explain that during COVID times, we have several classes that are called hybrid classes in person. Our students are able to use the facility in a spare way. And that's what you just saw. Yeah, this is our color correction rooms. We have a Black Magic Dubbins Mini controller, and we have beautiful LG display, the color calibrated. And we have two of these color correction rooms. And the last two, two rooms I'm gonna show in this floor is actually the music uh, finishing rooms. So one is a similar setup. It's a Arbit S6 console with a speaker system. And we have the next one is slightly bigger that I'm gonna have lights on. It's dark, okay? So you can see this is around the system setup with the S6 console and also color control for DaVinci Reserve. Great, let's start to wander. Um, we're gonna wander up to the yes, floor. We have a that's a beautiful okay. faculty ring I just show you. <laughs> okay. um, so we have about 70,000 square feet. Jay's gonna bring us up to the sixth floor. We're gonna show you a few other things. There are about 200 students here at a time, about 70 in each grade, um, in each cohort. It's generally a three-year program. A couple of the programs are two years, like producing and screen studies. Jay's going in up the main hallway right now, which is leads you up to the sixth floor, which we have the entirety of. We have, have, have half of the fifth floor. And so as we come up here, one of the first places we're gonna show you, this, the area in front of you is where students convene and work together. The area that he's gonna head towards across the way, so students sit here and work together and commune. We're gonna head towards our really beautiful screening room. This is our screen room with the Sony 4K projection system. You can see the screen. It's about 80 seats, state-of-the-art sound and yeah. picture. Yeah. Um, we use this room also for lectures, for guest speakers. We have an enormous amount of guest speakers, mm -hmm. people from the industry. So the faculty is made up of working industry members. Our advisory council is made up of Academy Award nominated um, filmmakers. And we often bring them to the school to meet with the students. Yep. And uh, it's a beautiful Sony 4K projector in the booth and also color control system for DaVinci so you can actually color correct it finishing the movie. So I think Jay's gonna head towards the equipment room and. As you're heading there, Jay, um, uh, which is where Jay spends the majority of his time, and Jay, tell us, somebody asked about the camera equipment that we have. Can you tell us about that as you begin to show us the equipment room? Sure. While you're enjoying beautiful, you know, downtown Brooklyn view mm -hmm. and Manhattan view, sure. This is actually a student pantry that's very important at the moment. It's closed for COVID. <laughs> but uh, we do have an industry standard or top of the line camera system and lighting and grip. Everything you name it, we should have it. So including the latest the Adi Alexa LF. We have Alexa XT, two of our Alexa XT Plus. 
we also have a loner Panavision Millennium for 35 millimeters shooting. We have three uh, Chapman Dallies. We have a Honda Jenny for outdoor shooting. We have lots of HMIs, different sizes, including M18s. Uh, we have, uh, you know, what else? Ricos. We have Beedle Light. We have, uh, you know, Jokers, Sky Panels. You name it, we have it. And we have about, about six red weapon cameras, seven Sony cameras, FS7. We have a three Panasonic EV-1. We have a 14 Canon C100. So we have actually too many cameras, I believe. <laughs> yeah, we have enough for all of you to have, uh, to make your films. We're gonna head down to the end of the hallway now. And as we do that, I'm gonna just answer a couple of questions. So someone asked about what they may have majored in undergrad mm -hmm. um, and uh, whether or not if they majored in, for example, English, would that make them be a suitable applicant for our graduate school? The answer to that is absolutely yes. So uh, some people come <laughs> to our school that, um, that did not major in film undergrad. They may have come from social sciences, art, photography, English, business, could be anything. So you do not need to have a background in film to come here. But the more experience you have, the Just better you will do here. And uh, the better you will be able to share with your colleagues because the school is all about um, collaboration, which we're gonna get to shortly. This is our construction shop um, where sets can be built, props can be gathered, wardrobe can be gathered, etc. cetera. Yep, just uh, gave you a idea of what this room is look like. And we have uh, some props here, some old antiques, you name it. <laughs> and this is our sound stage. So every class meeting at the moment, they have a dedicated space holding area so that way you know each class will only touch their gear during covid time that's because we have enough gear for every cinematographer meeting here so we have a beautiful large psych we have a 12k rd lights and 5k rd lights in the stage we have a 98 inch edge monitor for preview show the ceiling here yeah, we have a set that's beautifully done. We did have uh, the ASC masterclass here a week ago, if you remember. So that's about 20 foot high. So it, every grid has a power and uh, you have a fully controllable dimming system. So for a film school to have several stages and to have a grid in the ceiling mm -hmm. and is, is literally the equivalent of shooting professionally. And when I started making movies, I didn't get, end up on a soundstage like this <laughs> for 10 years of producing movies. Um, so th to be able to have this in film school is an extraordinary thing. So a few people asked about 35 millimeter mm -hmm. film. Yes, they're shooting a, with 35 millimeter film. Yes, we'll supply stock. It depends on which film you're making. And so shortly we're gonna be talking to Rick um, and he's going to tell you about the various films that we shoot, um, the various films that you shoot while you're here, and the various films that you crew on when you're here. So we'll get into that a little more specifically when Rick gets on and we talk about production. So where are we now? We're in one of the sound stages. This is a sound stage behind the set. So you can see this is a set and this is the behind. And I just show you your living space here. If we have a time, I can show you another studio that has a bedroom set. Okay. Someone just asked about how many people are admitted to each program. There is no limit. Um, there is no cap. Um, we're seeking to increase our enrollment. Um, uh, so there is no cap and there is no, uh, there's plenty of room. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. 
So we're going down our hallway on the sixth floor right now, and we're heading towards, I think, one of our other sound stages. Yeah, Jay? we can show. I can show you stage three. We have a main sound stage plus three slightly smaller stages for mm -hmm. cinematography and production classes. So let's reiterate that for a second. We have a large stage, and we have three other sound stages yeah. for classes, for instruction, and also for shooting. Mm -hmm. So we're um, super equipped. Yes. And this is the equipment room. We I'm going to just pass through here. Oh, we're going to come to Jay's <laughs> office. <laughs> nah, I'm not going to show my office. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you can see that's the, like a... So almost the Oh, there's Jay's office on the right. Oh, he's skipping it. <laughs> and uh, in this side, we have a demo rooms. That's a holding area, and you can check out the camera and test it. So we have a three demo rooms. That's a 24-7 access. So you store your gear and testing. And this Great. is the production three. And this side of the campus, we have a wardrobe room. We have a uh, makeup. Uh, we have a dressing rooms. This is uh, our stage three. As you can see, we have. And this stage, th this set just stays up as it is. The other rooms we, people erect and disassemble sets. This one mm -hmm. kind of stays. Yeah, this is kind of a, like a bedroom set. Sometimes we have a bathroom set there. That's the remove at the moment, but you can see the ceiling is very high. Yeah. Great. Um, super. So that, you know, again, it's, um, it's about 70,000 square feet. And one of the interesting things I want to make sure that everybody knows about is that Brooklyn College has a campus that's located out in Midwood, out in the central Brooklyn. The Fierstein Graduate School of Cinema is not on that campus. The Fierstein Graduate School of Cinema is located at the Steiner Studios, which is in Fort Greene, right next to Manhattan. So we are uh, the only school of Brooklyn College that isn't located on their campus. We have our own separate facility, which we like to be on our own, though we love our colleagues at Brooklyn College. Um, we're happy to be as part of a working studio. We are the only film school in the country that's housed on a working film lot. And at Steiner Studios films from Joker to Marvelous Mrs. Maisel TV show, The City on a Hill are shot here or were shot here. And you could see out the window where we are, which is pretty great um, to be there, um, to be here, which is where I am in my office um, with Jay. <laughs> so, um, Let's see. Jay, why don't you come on down? Are we good, Jay? Did we do everything? Yeah, we did everything. Okay. Yeah. Um, we did it really fast and skipped a bunch. Um, <laughs> yes, gonna, we did. We're, what we're going to do now is we're going to um, bring in another friend of ours. So we're going to say, Jay, thank you so much. You're a brilliant human being. Thank you. And uh, uh, Jay is sort of the soul of the school, if you will. No, um, this is my office, just kidding. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you wish it's your office. Okay, so we're going to move on. We're going to say thanks to Jay, and we're going to get rid of Jay. You're brilliant. Thank you, Mike. Okay. Um, and Ciao. we're going to remove that. And um, what we're going to do now is we're going to bring in another friend um, whose name is Rick Lopez. And... What Rick does is he's a distinguished lecturer at our school um, and he runs what we call the production department. So uh, he's a teacher here um, and he supervises all of the films um, that you make while you're here. So if you're here and you're coming to in the cinematography department, you will be the DP of at least four films. Oh, Mr. Hello. Lopez. Hi, Hello. How are you sir. doing? Very good. Thank you for joining us and joining Instagram Live. Uh, my pleasure. My pleasure. So I was giving you a very worthy introduction. Um, and uh, part of one of the most meaningful parts of the education that you receive here 
is the making of films, the collaborating with your colleagues and physically making films. We give you a lot of instruction and we turn you loose to make a number of films. So Jay, would you do us a favor and tell us how many films will, will the students make while they're here? In the course of the three years at, at Fierstein, students make four um, kind of tent pole films. Um, and each one kind of builds on the skills that you learn from the other so that you go from more basic to quite complicated as you get to the thesis film. The first semester that you're here, yeah. you're going to make a five minute Emma West film. So that is, there's no dialogue, there's no music. You learn how to tell movies just with a story and all of the students will rotate through the crew positions. Uh, the second film that you make in your second semester is what we call Indy 500. And why do we give it that name? That's because we put a budget cap of 500 bucks in order to teach everybody the kind of the gritty skills of learning how to make um, a, a good story with very little money. We assign your collaborators and you have to direct a movie written by somebody else. Then in your second year, because those are the two films you pick in your first year, we have, uh, you make a second year film, which we call the second year film. I suppose one of these days we could we could kind of dress it up, but we'll give you a full year in order to make that film. You you um, pre-produce it in the in the fall semester and you shoot and you post it in the spring. That film is building on what you learned in the first year um, in that we give you more freedom rather than assigning your collaborators. You choose students to work with in your cohort and everybody is now working in the specializations to which they applied to the school for. So if you're a DP, you're going to be DPing. If you're a producer, you're an editor, you're working your disciplines. Directors choose you and you choose the director and the script. So that's the- How long are those films, Rick, in length? So those first first year films, the the uh, MOS film and the Indy 500 are both five minutes. The second year film has a 12 minute limit. And then- Great that overlaps a little bit with the thesis, which is a three semester sequence. You prepare your thesis in the second semester of your second year, you shoot it in the first semester of your third year, and then you post it in your final semester here at Fierstein. And the time limit on that is 20 minutes, or if you're gonna be doing a TV pilot, uh, 25 minutes. And the idea is as you go, you learn skills. And there's really three principal skills that we're, we're, we're teaching. First, how to tell a story. Second, how to pull all the resources you need um, together in order to tell that story. That's the production producing part. And then the third, how to collaborate nicely with others so you can, uh, you can make it all happen. Great, and how do, the, um, how do the media scoring students interact with the productions? And how do the visual effects folks interact with the productions, because I know in the first couple of years, since they're so small, there's not a lot of visual effects, but when you get to your thesis film, you might have some visual effects. Yeah, so the, the films in your first year, the, the focus is really on story. So as you get to the second year film and the thesis film, the ambition of the films rises, and then you can add in other elements to that story-making process, like music, and we are blessed. I don't know of another film school in the United States with a media scoring track or um, specialization housed in the same spot. So you can connect and collaborate with one of the students, the media scoring track, and the same goes for visual effects. Since we have students who, they want to be visual effects artists or motion graphics artists. And uh, you know, if that is part of your story, um, then you can connect with them. So those collaborations and connections usually happen more in the second year film and especially on the thesis. Great. Um, and what happens with the thesis films when they're finished and when students are graduating? So we have a, a, um, a festival at the, at the end of it all, the Fierce Teen Festival, in which people from the industry invited. And then those students are, are ready for the marketplace. And we've had very good experience with students going on to um, some uh, notable festivals around the world, both in the United States and, uh, and Europe. Great. Um, and... Let's talk like a little bit about this sort of interdisciplinary approach and collaboration. Collaboration seems to be one of the main things that we're teaching at the school. You're encouraging, teaching, and facilitating. Can you talk to that a little? Sure. Fierstein is unique among New York schools in that we are a track school. 
So you apply to be in a particular track. It's similar. There, there's not too many film schools in the U.S. that do, um, that do that do that. But one of the things I think that it offers our students is, um, as your education progresses, you are deepening your craft in the particular specialization, as are all of your colleagues. And we combine them all in this chain of classes called production workshops. And depending upon the semester, you'll be going to class with Let's say that you're a cinematographer. Uh, in your second semester, or first semester, you'll be in a class with producers, writers, directors. In your second semester, you'll be in a class with a director. Um, and the class composition changes depending upon where a, uh, um, you know, where films are in the pre-production or production process. So um, the, the connections and the conversations are frequent so that um, uh, it's, a, it's a great place. I always kind of feel like the most important thing that a student is going to leave Fierstein or any film school um, for that matter um, is with the relationships that they form because um, you know, a lot of our students not only maintain very good relationships, but they're going to collaborate and work together and make money together after they graduate from school. You know, someone once said to me, they, they, they said, well, why, why should I pay to go to film school, why don't I just pay to make my own films and use the money that I would use to go to film school to make films? And I think Rick just answered that question a little bit because when you're here, you're making these films, but you're finding collaborators. And the work that you do with your collaborators here make you a better filmmaker. This is an art form that you can't do on your own. You need colleagues to do it with. Um, that's so, exactly Rick, you're, also, you're, you're very familiar with, with some of the other film schools in New York. I think, did you go to Columbia? Yeah, I'm a Columbia grad. Um, but yet you're working at Fierstein. Hmm. So <laughs> why, um, tell us about uh, how we slightly differ from some of the, I mean, NYU and Columbia are wonderful schools. Um, how, how do, why, why should someone come to Fierstein? Well, it's a, it's a different, it, it, it's a different emphasis. You're, at Columbia, for instance, where I went, you're, in, you're admitted in a very large class. I think we had 68 students, and um, you know, there's no particular specialization, and uh, you know, that's a lot of people trying to make films. And um, uh, at at some point, it becomes very difficult to kind of compete for the um, the attention of either of your of the faculty or your classmates, and so. Uh, you know, one of the things is because we have such a structured um, curriculum and a, um, a structured way in which um, uh, students collaborate, to me, I, I think it's a more effective way of, um, of, uh, of kind of learning the craft of what you're going to do. I mean, somebody once said to me, which I think is completely true, we can teach you the craft, but we can't teach you your own voice, right? But you know, one of the things that we can do is to teach or learn from the masters. And, um, you know, what, we haven't really talked too much about that, which is media studies, which is woven through all of our, um, you know, all of our curriculum, regardless of the disciplines. So, uh, you, know, you know, there's no better teacher than the people who do it really well. Right. And so um, we, you everybody is given a, a, a pretty healthy diet of, um, uh, of films from the canon. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the other faculty members and the filmmakers that are here? Sure. So the head of our directing track is Julia Solomonov. Um, uh, you know, she's a, a, a wonderful independent New York City filmmaker that has made a number of feature films. Her last feature film won Best Actor at the Tribeca Film Festival. She teaches um, all the time at um, Sundance. She's also a uh, producer and assistant director. Um, Justin Cleot, who was an extremely experienced uh, uh, New York-based um, and actually Canada-based um, producer. I think I saw his name on here somewhere. I, I don't know how many films, um, Jason, you can type it into the thing, how many films that uh, 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 Jason has made. Sarah Cawley, who's one of our cinematography um, distinguished lecturers, was a DP on Manifest, an extremely um, successful um, uh, 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 network episodic recently. Um, those are just some of the full-time faculty, but then the guest and adjunct faculty um, are always uh, bringing a fresh um, eye and voice uh, to the kind of stuff that you're going to learn, right? We're, it's art, 
And so nobody can tell you exactly how to do it, right? What we want to do is to expose you as much as you can while you're here. And then that's in the process. You learn your own voice and you, and you kind of define what uh, the, and make the craft your own. Jason just typed in that he's made 45 movies. Okay. For, that's a lot of movies. That's a lot of <laughs> movies. Yeah. Anything else that you'd like to share with us before you head off? No, I, 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 I just invite everybody who is on here to, uh, um, to apply. You know, we're always looking, we're on rolling admissions, which is a great thing. So um, we're, we're always looking for, for good students. We put a, um, actually, you know, one thing I'm going to say is the diversity of our students. Not only do our students come from every walk of life, both racially and ethnically, um, uh, in New York, but they come from every country, it seems like, in the world. I have students from all over the world. And every age, I, you know, we've had students who come directly out of college. I've had a student that is 62 years old and, a, you know, a, used to work at a bank in New York. So um, our classrooms feel and look like New York. And that is a wonderful, wonderful uh, Petri dish, a laboratory in which um, to, to learn how to make a film. Excellent. Rick, thank you so much for okay. popping by. You're a brilliant human being, and we thank you for joining us. All right. Thank you, Richard. Okay. We're going to say goodbye to our lovely friend, Rick. And I'm going to figure out. Oh, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to ask another friend of ours, whose name is Matt Moore, who is the academic program manager um, of our school. And he is... Um, uh, what he does is he he is the sort of legs of the school. He makes this place run. And uh, he allows for the applications to go through smoothly. He answers all of your academic questions. He helps you with financial aid. He helps you with um, uh, all parts of the application process, all parts of the curriculum, all parts of of uh, financial aid, everything. And he's a wonderful human being. He's been here since the beginning and we're gonna welcome, what do I hit here, Anita? The, um, oh, you didn't hit it. We wanna hit this and then. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's Jason. Oh, we wanna Back. go. Sorry guys, um, we're gonna bring in our wonderful friend, Matt Moore, any second now, um, I believe. Oh. Hello, Mr. Moore. Hi, Richard. Can you hear me? Absolutely, I can hear you. Welcome to the maiden voyage of uh, Instagram Live at Fierstein. Yeah, thanks. I'm, I'm excited to join, and thank you for those wonderful words um, of introduction. So uh, I wanted to talk to you all uh, today a little bit about um, admissions uh, and the application process uh, at Fierstein. Um, so... At Fierstein, we effectively have nine different programs that you can apply to, including directing, cinematography, post-production, producing, screenwriting, digital animation and visual effects, sonic arts, media scoring, uh, and an MA program uh, in screen studies. And the primary uh, application materials or components um, for all of those programs are pretty similar. Um, we need um, transcripts from any college or university you may have attended. Uh, we need two letters of reference. Uh, those do not have to be letters of reference from academia. Um, uh, our general guideline or, or suggestion is that you ask people to write your letters who are in a good position um, uh, to speak to your strengths and potential as an applicant. Um, we also require a, a personal statement or what we call a, a statement of purpose, um, a resume uh, or CV, and then a portfolio. Um, and the portfolio is the one thing that differs between all of our programs. So uh, on our website under admissions, you'll find um, uh, if you scroll down, you'll see uh, broken down by program the specific portfolio requirements uh, for each of the, the programs we offer at Fierstein. Um, I do want to mention one thing. Um, it is possible if you're applying to the MFA Cinema Arts program, it is possible um, to apply for a first and a second choice program. And, um, and although you won't be able to designate that 
when you fill out our online application, if you do want to apply to a second, uh, first and a second choice, uh, you can let me know and, uh, and uh, I'll make sure that um, the person reading or the people reading your application um, take into account that you have a, a first and a second choice. Uh, but if you do that, you do have to provide uh, uh, portfolio materials for both your first uh, and second choice. Um, and as far as the, the actual process that we go through uh, for admissions, um, every application is read by, uh, by two readers. Um, and after uh, a period of review, um, we score each application and we decide who we want to invite um, for interviews. Um, and uh, once we've done the interview, um, we make a decision about whether to offer you admission. Um, we're a little different than some of the other schools in New York and Los Angeles in that we, <clears throat> we interview and make admissions offers on a, sort of on a rolling basis, which means, you know, if we interview you in late February, we might notify you as soon as the first or second week of March. So we don't have like a set date by which we, um, by which we make decisions and send out, you know, a notification um, to everybody. Um, and as far as deadlines go, we have a, uh, what we call um, our priority deadline, which is January 15th every year. It's January 15th. And anyone who gets their application in by that date, um, those are the applications that we're going to, uh, to look at first, uh, the applicants that we're going to potentially interview first, and the, the applicants who will possibly receive the, the earliest uh, offers of admission. After the 15th, we will continue accepting applications, reading applications, interviewing applicants uh, until we fill um, all the places uh, that we reasonably have available um, in, our, in our nine uh, different programs. Um, How much does it cost to attend the Fairstein Graduate School of Cinema? Uh, it's a roughly about 11,000 uh, per semester for in-state students. Um, and about twenty thousand per semester uh, for out-of-state students. And is that is that tuition and fees? That's tuition and fees. And Great. you can find a breakdown um, on our website under admissions. Uh, there's a button for tuition, fees, and scholarships, um, and you can see a, a breakdown um, of our tuition and fees. Um, I I will mention since a number of people have asked about scholarships. Um, we do have scholarships available. Um, if you apply to Fierstein and are admitted, you'll automatically be considered um, for a scholarship. So, uh, so there's no separate application. There's no separate essay or form that you need to fill out. If you apply and you're admitted, we'll consider you for a scholarship. Um, we don't necessarily offer full scholarships um, or even necessarily half scholarships. Uh, but we do try to offer support to as many uh, students as we can. Um, we don't have traditional graduate assistantships um, at Fierstein. Uh, we do hire in, in normal times when it's not uh, a pandemic. We hire uh, quite a large number of students as part-time employees um, and through federal work study to help us run uh, the giant facility and operation um, that we have at Fierstein. Um, and uh, are the students full-time or part-time or both? So it depends on the program. Um, most of the MFA cinema arts tracks are, are full-time um, and you have to apply and be admitted in the fall. Um, but the MFA media scoring program, the MFA sonic arts program, and the MA screen studies programs uh, can all be done part-time and you can apply for admission um, for the spring uh, or for the fall. Now, that being said, even though we, we say it's full-time, uh, what percentage of the students do you think work while they're also going to school? Um, pretty close to 100%. Um, it's, uh, you know, I'll be honest, it's, it's difficult to get what you hopefully want to get out of film school and work a full-time 40-plus hour job. Um, a few 
uh, of our crazy students have, I think, managed to do that. But most people are working under 40 hours. Um, you know, again, some people work at the school, um, and that would typically be 20 or fewer hours. Uh, but yeah, it's Fierstein is very much uh, a school where the majority of students are working and, and putting themselves through through school. One of the people on our chat asked about um, how they can make their applications stand out to us. Well, I would say uh, one element of the application that I think is really important is your personal statement, because that's, that's really where you, you kind of bury your soul, so to speak. Um, you know, it's an opportunity to kind of tell us your story, you know, tell us about the journey that, that took, that's gotten you to the point where you want to embark on two or three years of uh, graduate film school. Um, it's an opportunity to kind of like make your case for, for why, you know, we should admit you to our program. And also to talk a little bit about your, you know, your creative vision and your, your creative voice. Um, because, you know, at, at First Scene, we're, we're all about story and, and we're interested, we're really interested in the kinds of stories uh, that, that everyone wants to tell. I think one of the things that's interesting about Fear Scene that I've noticed is that even though there are very, very technical aspects of our curriculum, learning how to edit on an Avid, it's very technical. Learning how to use um, the color correction Da Vinci um, machines. All of these technical um, and logistical um, yeah. apparatuses, appar whatever that word is, um, are in service of storytelling, are in service of telling a story. So the storytelling aspect of the school is what unites all of the disciplines, regardless of what discipline you are in. Would you agree or? Yeah, that's, uh, that's absolutely the case. Um, you'll notice uh, in our, if you, if you look at all the different portfolio requirements, um, you'll notice that some of them overlap. For instance, for producing and for directing, you can write a treatment. So if, if somebody has not had the opportunity to direct a, a, a short film or a feature film or a, a, a documentary or something like that, um, they, are, they still have an opportunity to apply uh, to be in our directing program, to learn the craft of directing by uh, uh, writing a treatment for a, you know, a feature project or a pilot uh, that they'd like to direct. Thank you, Lil Yeasty, a directing alum who happens to be on, who's telling some folks that it is, um, well, you can read it right there for yourselves, I think. Um, so thank you for, for joining us. Also, hello to the person, whoa, hello to the person all the way from, who matches with his daughter with not a nice look. Um, uh, thank you, and a hello to the person from Turkey who said that they uh, were calling in from Turkey. Um, what else do you think folks might need to know, Matt? Um, I, I saw one question about the schedule. Um, typically, our classes are Monday through Friday. The bulk of them meet during the day, um, but there are nighttime classes um, as well. It's not possible to complete our program uh, only through taking classes at night. A lot of the required courses are during the daytime, um, but it's it's not just about the hours that you spend in, in the classroom. It's a lot of it or the majority of it is, is about what you do outside of class and how you take what you're learning in class and, you know, and, um, uh, and the, the skills that you're developing and bringing them to bear on, um, on, uh, on your film projects. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a commitment. Um, each of our classes only meets once a week. So there are semesters where you might knock out all of your classes on say like a Monday and a Tuesday, and then you have the rest of the week open to do your classwork and to work and, and that kind of thing. Great. So I want to say hi to the person from Tunisia. And I especially want to say hello to Pr Priscilla Alvarez from the South Bronx, because that's where I'm from. So I'm saying hello. And it's the South Bronx. So, um, uh, one of the other things we wanted to tell you guys about is that even in these times of the pandemic, um, we've been able to open up our school. You saw some students working. So basically, 
There are about 80 courses, generally speaking, across a semester. About 10 of those courses, 10 to 12, we selected to be hybrid courses. Those hybrid courses allow some in-person activity. No more than five people with the instructor, masks for everybody, et cetera, because we felt we had to, to open up at least a little bit because some things you can't learn online. We've been really successful at doing that. The other thing that we've been very, very successful with is that when Rick was telling you about the PW1s and PW2s and PW4s and Indy 500s, et cetera, i.e. the films that you make, those crews are going out. They go out by themselves. I mean, it is, yes, part of a class, but we consider that production activity. And based upon the year film that you are. The first year films, we allow crews of five plus one. The plus one is a COVID safety instructor. Um, the, when you're in your um, second year, we allow those crews to be seven plus one COVID safety instructor. And moving along to the third year, um, we allow the crews to be a size of 10 plus a COVID safety instructor. So everybody, please a ask questions in the question area, I think. Is that where they should be asking yeah, questions? and one that... Um... Hold on one sec, guys. I'm just looking and... This one, so if you can read that one out. I have a question about applications, says it's my pay dot pk. Um, I have a question about applications. I sent in a CUNY application for the Brooklyn College Theater Program. Did you, well, I can't ask you a question, sorry. Um, <laughs> I was gonna ask you if it was undergrad or grad, but I, you can't answer really, so, uh, and uh, how do you, I can't see the rest of the question it is the problem. How do you see the rest of it? It doesn't scroll. Um, wondering if I'm also allowed to apply here. Yes, you can apply here and you can apply there. And I think, right Matt? You ha the way the system works is that um, you would have to, if you applied for consideration for theater, um, can you, you can only apply to one program at a time through our application system. But once theater considered your application uh, and rendered a decision, um, you can then um, have your application sort of shifted over uh, so that you can uh, you can also apply um, uh, to Fierstein. So yeah, you'll notice the system doesn't allow you to, to apply to more than one um, discrete uh, degree program at a time, but it is possible and we have had it happen where somebody's applied to multiple MFA or graduate programs and, you know, um, maybe they've gotten offers from both and decided which, which they want to do. But you couldn't, um, I couldn't hear exactly everything, but um, uh, I mean, you can't go to the theater program and the MFA program here at the same time. No, you cannot. Um, you have to do, uh, you have to do one program at a time. Okay, great. Because it is considered full time with the exception of sonic arts, which, and media scoring and screen studies, which can be, can Correct. be officially part time. The yes. other ones are full time, but you can work while you're doing it. But I didn't tell you that. Um, uh, please ask some more questions. Um, financial aid is absolutely applicable to graduate programs. We give financial aid. You can apply to, for financial aid. You can get a loan, et cetera. So there's ways in which we can help you cover the costs of tuition and excellence fees. And there is also a way that you can apply for a loan because we are an accredited official school. Right, yeah. Matt? For graduate students, the primary uh, resource for loans is, is called a direct loan. It's an unsubsidized, it's essentially the, the graduate version of a Stafford loan. And all U.S. students are eligible at this point, I think, for up to $20,500 per academic year. Great. Um, if I graduate at the end of spring 2021, can I still apply for fall 2021? Yes. So like, and you know, if you're, if you're in a program and you're finishing in, uh, in May of 2021 and you want to apply to start Fierstein in August of 2021, 
Um, you can do that. We've even had students who are finishing their degrees over the summer before they start. Um, it's a matter of getting, usually it's a matter of getting your final transcript or diploma submitted to the college so that, um, so that they have on record that you completed a, a, a bachelor's degree. If you're in another graduate program, um, it actually doesn't matter because if you already have a bachelor's degree, um, that, you know, that's what the, that's what Brooklyn college needs to, to be able to, you know, sort of validate you as a applicant for graduate school. Great. Thank you. Got key studio Bronx for checking in in the house. Gotta love that. Um, uh, will people ask us some more questions? I, I did see one asking uh, whether cinematographers um, gaff or grip or, you know, serve as electrics on uh, thesis films in their first year. And yes, in, um, we encourage all first year students uh, to, to volunteer on any and all kinds of productions that, that are going on at Fierstein. Um, you know, obviously the, the thesis film is the sort of the most sophisticated um, project that students work on. And, and so like if you're in your first semester, because we usually shoot our thesis films in the fall, um, it's a great opportunity to meet second and third year students. Um, and that's an important, you know, part of the experience is, is, you know, just trying to meet as many students as you can. And you also, you know, um, thesis films always need the help and you, you know, there's a, there's a lot to learn. So there's a, there are a lot of opportunities like that. Great. Um, hi, Luca from Brazil. And basically what we're doing in terms of, of COVID is that we have Brooklyn college has several, um, uh, uh, COVID safety officers um, that are working for the school that keep us apprised of how our area is doing. And we have to submit crazy plans to them for how we wanted to do our classes, how we wanted to deal with our equipment, how often we clean our equipment at night, um, how we are only allow a booking into an editing room once a day. So we allow the night to go across for it to be cleaned and for the room to be empty for a period of time. So we're, we follow what the, the industry is doing, but we are more restricted than the industry. So we're on the, the lot at Steiner, and they're shooting away with full crews. We're not. We're shooting away with small crews and in limited circumstances. So everyone's making their films. They just might have to make them with a smaller crew. And they have to make them with a mask on. And we encourage people to shoot outside, not inside. And we have restrictions on how many people can be within a space at, at any given time um, because of COVID. And so far, knock wood, um, we have not had experienced any COVID cases. And that's not to say that we won't, um, but we haven't yet. And we've been really careful and we're sort of actually giving ourselves a big pat on the back, to be honest, that's so far so good. And as as our area um, in Fort Greene gets better, we'll do more. And as it does worse, we'll do less. Um, but we're, we, we are, I think, facilitating a really solid educative pedagogical uh, uh, routine for our students to fulfill the requirements of the degree. And we're also allowing our students, once they, once they graduate, to continue to have access to equipment. And we're offering graduates a little bit more to try to, for lack of a better expression, make up, of, make up for some of the frustrations that we've experienced and they've experienced due to COVID. And because the experience is not exactly the same, it's pretty darn good, but we try to add some gravy to the meal once the meal's done because, you know, people have missed out on the same token We've been able to have wonderful seminars with people in LA and in different countries because it's all on Zoom. So as the Queen's Gambit was coming onto Netflix, we had the creator of the show, Scott Frank, Academy Award nominee for Logan and various other films, Out of Sight. Um, he spoke with our students. Um, the producer of, of that series, Bill Horberg, was on the call. The composer, Carlos Rafael, was on the, Carlos Riviera Rafael, Rafael Rivera, excuse me, was on the call, as was Michelle Tommaso, the editor. 
And Netflix really generously gave us free subscriptions to their service so that we could extend them to our students that didn't have Netflix to be able to watch the series. In fact, they gave them free Netflix for the month to watch anything they wanted, which is just a nice gift from our friends at Netflix. And um, we watched the first several episodes, and we had those four filmmakers join us. I don't think I could have pulled that off if we weren't in COVID. I couldn't have gotten all those people together at the same time, in the same hour, if it weren't for Zoom. So trying to find a little bit of a silver lining. Um, a postgraduate rental program. What is that? Agent Noir is asking about a post. You mean to, if you mean to rent equipment from us, no, we don't do that, but we make our equipment available to you when it's available once you graduate. Is that about right, Matt? Um, I mean, we, you have all kinds of equipment access while you're still a student. We don't have the capacity to loan equipment to people once they graduate. We do offer support for graduating students who are finishing their thesis film. So we usually have a, a period um, in the summer after you graduate um, when you're allowed to come in and use uh, facilities uh, to finish color and sound um, and that kind of thing. But no, we don't make equipment available to, uh, to graduates generally. And if you're still an undergrad but want to apply if you're still an undergrad who want to apply before the priority consideration deadline, is it okay to have a partial transcript? Yes, absolutely. Um, so you can, you can just submit what's like your, your in process transcript and then, you know, we'll use that. Um, and then it, once you're hopefully admitted, um, it's, it's uh, your responsibility to submit a final transcript or diploma to the college. Um. Uh, and are there special scholarships for international students or the scholarships or the scholarships, whether you're international or national, it's all the same thing. Yeah. I mean, we, uh, there are not, but international students are, is eligible for our scholarships as, uh, as us citizens are. Um, we, we've been lucky in that the awards that we've gotten haven't really stipulated that only, uh, you know, U.S. residents or only New York State residents um, be considered for awards, so. Great. Um, is there an alternative to transcripts? Matt mentioned something about a diploma. Yeah, I mean, usually if you've, if you've graduated um, and you actually have your, your diploma, you can, uh, you can submit a copy of that. Um, the thing with transcripts now, for most schools, it's actually very easy because most colleges and universities use, use uh, clearing houses to electronically transmit uh, official transcripts. So we don't have to do, you don't have to have your transcript, you know, specially sealed and snail mailed um, to the city university of New York. Um, most of the time you can just, uh, you can just arrange to have it transmitted electronically. So, it, it would always be my suggestion would always be if you're if you're just finishing up your undergrad degree um, and you're admitted and you want to attend, just send your final transcript. That's the I think it's the most. And if your GPA is below a two point oh, might you still get into Fierce team? I mean, we we typically look for for around a three point oh GPA, um, but that's not a, a a strict number because we want to consider. Uh, your application holistically um, and, you know, and, and kind of take a look at, at, at your overall application, not just at your grades. I will say, you know, we want to make sure that everyone we admit, you know, that we feel confident that you can handle the rigor uh, of the work in our program. It's really, you know, graduate school is, is not undergrad. It's, it's, it's really um, uh, tremendously demanding. We want to, set everyone up for success. So the only time, you know, if, if your GPA is below 3.0, I think it's, it's a question of whether we feel confident, you know, if you may be incredibly talented, but you also have to have the, you know, the discipline to, to follow through and, and, you know, and be a, uh, a good citizen in our program. And, and part of being a good citizen is, is, you know, it's, 
because it's a collaborative program, you know, each production is, is only as strong as its weakest link, as they say. And so like we, you know, we, we just, we want to admit students who are, you know, bring their, their, their A game. Also, one last thing I will say, you know, after years of looking at applications and reading transcripts, there's a lot of reasons why people don't have, uh, you know, a stellar GPA, and it doesn't always have to do with their academic abilities um, or potential. And, you know, um, we all have, you know, things that happen in life that, that can sometimes impact um, uh, our studies and, and, uh, and our ability to succeed in class. And so we, we take that stuff into account as well, you know. I think, you know, just to add on to that slightly is that um, Matt touched upon someone's disposition and willingness, desire, and capacity uh, to collaborate. And um, someone who has a 4.0 and a this, that, but is we see has a certain sort of ego or attitude that might make them be uncollaborative, that would be very disruptive to our program. And so because you get better by working with others and because you come to film school to work with others, the, the, the display of this kind of collaborative uh, feeling to you and the openness to learn and the openness to learn not only from your instructors, but just as importantly from your fellow students will make you do better, will allow you. Um, to do better at our school. And you get out of graduate school what you put in. If you sit back and wait to be fed the program, you're going to be malnutritioned. If you participate and lean forward, um, you will benefit from it greatly. So it requires, uh, because you're adults, this is, we're not monitoring you like you're in undergraduate school. We take people who are 60 years old. We take people who are 50 years old. Um, so it, it is a very adult, collaborative, friendly um, place, except for Matt's daughter, who's not welcome. In I wouldn't recommend Instagram Matt, Live with a kindergartner. Anything else you want to share with our folks? Um, I mean, only just that, uh, you know, Fierstein is a, is an amazing community. I mean, as, um, Professor Lopez mentioned, you know, Fierstein is incredibly diverse in, in every respect, but it's really, it's a, it's an amazing community. And I think that's what a lot of people apply to film school to, to get is, um, is that community and that, you know, ability to, to find their kind of creative, kindred spirits. Uh, as I like to say, it's a lot harder to do that during a pandemic, but um, the pandemic won't last forever. And, you know, we look forward to having everybody back in the, the amazing facility that Jay showed you earlier um, so that, you know, we, we can all um, sort of share the journey together. Thank you so much, Matt. I'm going to push the button so you disappear. Really appreciate you coming and tell your daughter I send my best. Okay. Thanks, everybody, and uh, yeah, thanks for joining us today. So um, thank you all for joining us. I hope it, this was helpful. Um, uh, the application fee is waived if you have registered for this. Um, if you have not already registered, you can register by going to bit.ly backslash Fierstein, F-E-I-R-S-T-E-I-N-R-E-G. Um, when you register, we will automatically have captured your information and you will not pay the $75 application fee. If any of you have additional questions, questions for us, for me, for Matt, for Rick, uh, for any of us, anyone here, um, please send them via Instagram to Fierstein or Brooklyn College um, on the Instagram account. We will be sure to... Um, to answer them um, and really glad you guys joined us. I hope it was helpful. Let us know if you need more. And I think we should do this again because it was kind of fun and I think it worked. And it's three o'clock and I say thank you and go make good films and see you soon. Ciao.